What kind of trends are there for 2023 for the chiropractic profession? I'm Dr. Michael Perush, and I'm joined in the studio today with my good friend and co-host, Dr. Troy Fox. Welcome, everybody, to the KC Chiropults podcast. Hey, I have some exciting news. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Barlow Brain and Body Institute, helping doctors learn functional neurology without all the complicated stuff. So if you're looking to add brain-based therapies to your practice, don't look any further. You'll want to check out barlowbrainandbody.com for upcoming training programs, resources, and more. That's barlowbrainandbody.com. So be sure to check them out. Troy, trends for 2023. So, you know, every every year at the end of the year, I always compile all this stuff of what, mm-hmm. of what we see coming up. And I see so many opportunities when we look in, into the crystal ball in the future. And I keep hearing doctors going, oh my gosh, 2023 is going to be terrible. The inflation economy reimbursement. You guys, there's so many opportunities. Quit looking at the negative. Let's Mm -hmm. flip it around and look at the positive. So I just thought we'd kind of talk a little bit about that today. So the first one I want to throw out is a little counterintuitive. It's insurance reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So I always ask the question and, and I'll let you pose the answer here. Is insurance reimbursement going up or down, Troy? Uh, it's going down. Yeah, it's going down. It's going down yeah. in flames. So and, you would and, think. And co-pays are going up. So it's a double. Co-pays are sword. going up. Here's the crazy thing. Insurance, is ex- or insurance premiums sorry, are expected to increase by as much as 75% this next year. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. patients are going to be focused on the cost of what their healthcare insurance is. And so it seems counterintuitive intuitive that there would be an opportunity there. Here's the opportunity. Right. Does re does does insurance reimburse everything? No. No, of course they don't. Thank the Lord. Amen. They don't because that means there's opportunity in those things that insurance doesn't reimburse or doesn't reimburse well. What do they not reimburse? The primary thing they don't reimburse is what? Chiropractic maintenance care. So mm-hmm. how many of your par- patients have you been playing the insurance game, changing the diagnosis, trying to, you know, help help patients stay on the insurance when they really should be on maintenance. It's time to move patients over to maintenance. It's time to look at those therapies and add them into treatment plans that aren't reimbursed by insurance. If the patient needs it, that's where you have control. Yeah. And you and I just talked about this before the show about functional improvement, uh, pain response and how the insurance model works. And it works. Unfortunately, it's, it, it doesn't, we're a square peg or a round peg in a square hole because yeah. we don't fit into that model very well. And they're looking at pain reduction. Even right. though they say they're talking about function, they're really looking at pain, pain reduction in a lot of cases. Um, and, you know, there are some of our patients that we can reduce their pain and we may not see great increases in function. There are some that we will, but you have to be mindful of that because that's really where they're going to trip you up from a standpoint of billing insurance as well, which is it can become quite a game and you can get yourself in a bad position really quickly just trying to love on a patient. Yeah, you can. You can. So do yourself a favor, do the patient a favor. And we've been talking about this for three or four years mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Move patients to cash. Move as much of your practice towards cash. That's where you have control over your fees, over your revenue, over your profit is on the cash side of your practice. And make sure that you document that when you do that, that you should release that patient, that it yep. should be very, it should be if I look at your notes, I should know when you got released to maintenance or wellness care and why, and it should be well-documented and why. Yep. And then, and then you're ready to go. And that move over to maintenance should be well-documented and why Mm -hmm. as well. So Mm -hmm. being Mm -hmm. on maintenance doesn't relieve you from documentation, No, but it does relieve you from the confines of insurance reimbursement and gives you control back in your practice. So that's opportunity. Number one, Mm -hmm. here's another opportunity audits. So again, you're probably thinking, wow, where's the opportunity there? (laughs) That's not an opportunity. That's a danger, danger, Will Robinson. Mm -hmm, And you're right, mm -hmm. it is. But but here's the opportunity. The opportunity is to put some tools in place in your practice that help you avoid audits or overcome an audit in a positive manner if you do happen to get one. So what are some of those things? Well, look at your internal compliance. Are you doing internal audits along the way? You know, Trey, you and I've talked about this, but we see all the oh, time yeah. doctors, doctors' records. 
And these EHR systems mm -hmm. do crazy things. Sometimes they'll leave holes in your notes. They'll put things into your notes that you didn't expect. So right. you will catch those kind of things if you do some internal audits along the way. Right. So because you can go from he you can go from hero to zero in a matter of about five seconds when yep. you print a note out that you thought looked phenomenal. You did a really great job. And the EHR system is not set up for your note. And you print it out and it looks like a kindergartner wrote it. Right. And then all of a sudden you go from hero to zero. Although all the information's there, it's it's transposed in a way that looks horrible. So uh I know, Dr. Perush, you have a solution to this, and it's a pretty easy solution. What is that solution? Print your notes out once in a while. Actually read Great them. Great idea. Great yeah. idea. Yeah. Actually look at them. So here's what we recommend. Print out a Medicare, a general insurance, a PI if you do PI work, a work comp if you do work comp, and a, and a cash mm -hmm. note once a week. And just read through them. Just make them random. Print them off. Read them. If there are problems with them, document it. Right. That you can't go back and fix it. Remember that you, you can't yeah. alter a note once it's made, unless you do an addendum to it. But and if you've been, if, if you've ahead. been doing this for years and, and you realize all of a sudden your notes are junk when you try to print them out and you never really paid attention to that, there's also a thing called your compliance manual, right? Right. So in, in your compliance manual, you need to denote the fact that you identified that there was a problem with your, with your EHR system and what steps you're making to change that. What that does is gives you a little bit of insulation from the bad notes. Uh, it, it's not perfect. I mean, you can't like not take notes and then go, Oh, I just realized I wasn't taking notes for the last 10 years, or <laughs> I wasn't hitting, I wasn't hitting the mandatory bases that I have to hit. But what it does allow you to do at that point is it allows you to at least identify the fact that, Hey, my notes looked really good when I took them in the EHR system, but when I print them out, they look horrible. And we're, we're taking steps to change that to where all the information is reflected the way that it should be. So there's, that is a right. benefit to your compliance. It, it shows an attempt to be compliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So utilize that process and create a procedure around it and learn how to document correctly. We spend a lot of time with our clients on this, yeah. learn how to document, tell that proper story, use the right diagnosis codes know when to discharge a patient, know how to create a treatment plan structure mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. sense with the diagnosis that you've created. So incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that this is another trend, but this is something that we've been talking about now for a few years, and that's the opioid crisis. It's still around. In fact, it's probably more prevalent than ever as we hear more and more about the fentanyl coming across the Southern border, but go mm -hmm. out and talk to the medical doctors about the fact that your practice may be a great alternative for them when looking for pain control for their patients, for their pain-based mm -hmm. patients mm -hmm. instead of opioids. Most medical doctors in most States are under the gun to be able to find alternatives for those patients. There's no reason why chiropractic shouldn't be part of that. And it, and it may not always be just your chiropractic adjustment. Um, those of us right. that may, maybe you, maybe you're using laser in your practice. Uh, right, or shockwave or decompression or yeah, shock whatever. Wave, decompression, maybe you're doing some dry needling or acupuncture. All those are viable methods. And sometimes where you may not be able to get the door open with just the adjustment, you may say, hey, I also do acupuncture. I also right. do dry needling or I do decompression. And they go, oh, I'd like to have a few patients utilize that method. Exactly. So, exactly. So get out and talk to the medical doctors. Mm -hmm. This is something that they're going to be interested in hearing from you. Talk to hospital administrators, chief of staff, see if you can get in and make a little presentation and so forth. Mm -hmm. Here's another opportunity. Keep up on the ICD-10 and CPT codes out there. You know, here's the great thing. A few years ago, what did we get? We got a brand new set of codes. We went from ICD nines to ICD tens and boom, all of a sudden we were finally given a way to document the maintenance patient with the S mm -hmm. codes and the diagnose diagnostic Z codes. So mm -hmm. use those to your advantage. That gives you the ability to literally move a patient over to maintenance and show the world in your notes, in your record keeping that that's exactly what you've done. And if you don't understand how all that works, either A, you know, holler at us, we can help you with that, or B, Absolutely. Google it, 
Yeah, we all right. Google stuff, right? The Google is there, awesome. There's a lot. There's a lot of good documentation. I have actually <laughs> done a review of documentation out there just recently mm-hmm. on maintenance care codes uh, with ICD tens, and there's really some great information. Whether it comes from ACA, ICA, whether it comes from, you know, uh, maybe some compliance groups that are out there as well that have thrown stuff online. There, there's a ton of great information that kind of gives you a primer on that and gives you a heads up on, okay, here's how you should be doing it, so you can compare what you're doing to that and go, Ooh, I need to learn a little bit more. Primer. Good word usage. Primer. Love it. Yeah. Primer. You know, here's another opportunity, non-covered services. I see a lot of doctors shying away from non-covered services saying, well, my insurance, the insurance company is not going to cover it for the patient. If the patient needs it, put it in the treatment plan. If it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, pick something shockwave, for example, and mm-hmm. it's not covered. That's Okay. Learn how to communicate because here's here's the great thing. Here's the opportunity. Patients will spend money in this economy with you if they find value in what you're doing. So learn how to communicate that value. And remember, those non-covered services, those are the ones that give you control over your revenue too. So make sure you're mixing those in there. But most importantly, the opportunity here is to learn how to convey that value to your patients. So learn how to communicate that. You need to really learn to do this as well for for a couple of reasons. One, this is how we get caught in the trap of, well, this patient has 12 visits per year through their insurance company, and I'm going to utilize what they have through their insurance company. Then you get audited and then they go, hmm, a lot of that wasn't medically necessary because that was maintenance care, right? You were seeing them once a month. Now you're caught in a trap. Because you utilized it, you got paid, and now you're getting audited on it. When in reality, what should have happened initially is you should have used the acute care model initially. You should have used probably some of those non-covered services like shockwave or maybe cold laser. Maybe you should have needled them, acupunctured them, whatever you might need to do on top of that. And some of you may disagree with that and say, I only need to adjust them. I'm not here to argue about what we should or shouldn't do. But in that acute care model, let's do what we need to do and move them away from that. So we have to start looking at non-covered services, including the adjustment, and not be afraid to tell a patient, hey, here's what you need to do. You're the doctor, not them. Right. Exactly. And just because just because they have insurance for 12 visits and they don't understand what that insurance is, that's acute care insurance, right? They got 12 visits a year or whatever they've got. Right. Um, some of them don't even have that. Some of them have five visits total. Now, would you want to use all five visits on your chiropractic care and not leave anything for a diagnostic that might need to be done during the year? Let's say you, you, all of a sudden you can't see out of one eye. And I used all five of my visits already. So I, I'm going to want to save a little bit anyway. So I talk to patients right up front about utilizing your care in a way that we are being smart about it. Right. So this is a non-covered service, it's a little cheaper than the $200 exam you're going to get for that eye. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when we talk about money, I want to talk about the recessionary consumer here for just a second, because there's a big opportunity here. You know, in today's recessionary times, bad economy, whatever you want to call it, people are going to have a tendency to want to save money, right? I mean, the rising cost of food and gas and living expenses, we all feel it. You go to the gas Mm -hmm. pump and it's sticker shock every time you go. And so people are going to have a tendency to want to reduce expenditures on low value items and services. So where do your patients find the value of the service you provide? This is the opportunity. The post-pandemic patient or consumer will spend money on wellness-based services because there's a heightened awareness of it, but they have to know that that's what you provide. So remember, a lot of people look at chiropractors as people who, as doctors who work on neck pain and low back pain in the consumer's mind that doesn't necessarily say anything about wellness. Mm-hmm. And so people want that ongoing care and people will spend money on, on services that they find value in that are related to health and wellness. So make sure that you're positioning your practice correctly in what the consumer is looking for. You have to convey to that patient. And, and I talk to patients about this all the time, that the most important component of care for me, for you as a patient 
is wellness or periodic care, maintenance care, whatever you want to call it, trying to keep you functional long term. It's really right. not the short term acute care. I mean, and a lot of people focus on that. And when you focus on that and that only, your patient doesn't see a value in the wellness care following because you never really told them about it. You right. just go, oh, hey, you know, it'd probably be a good idea if you'd get adjusted once a month or once every three weeks or whatever at the end. And it's kind of a haphazard add-on at the very end that you don't really spend a whole lot of time with. I tell patients up front while they're still in acute care, and we talk about it throughout the acute care model, that really this is the ultimate goal, you know, right. that, that we're looking at. Now, if you're not looking at it, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make them drink, right? So <laughs> right. I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you what I feel like you need to do, and then you're going to make a decision based off of that. But at least now they're educated to make that decision. Right. Absolutely. And, at, and as a result, my practice is up right now. I don't care about recession or not. Sure. Sure. And most of the practices that we work with are up right now because they're, mm-hmm. they're falling in uh, and along the, the lines of these opportunities that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Here's an, a, a couple more and then we'll call it a show, but um, get creative and techie, get creative and techie. You know, there's some great technology out there right now. You can be doing text reminders, computerized, um, uh, scheduling. Mm-hmm. Patients can fill out paperwork online. You can do text reminders, text reactivations. Um, there, there's so many things that you can do. And the less tech that you use, the less value you're presenting to patients because patients are seeing that techie approach in most of healthcare right now. So you got to mm-hmm. jump on that bandwagon. There's a huge opportunity there. And I know, Troy, that you've you've done a lot of that in your practice. Oh yeah. They want the flash and the, and the fireworks. I mean, it's really, they're like, Whoa, I can jump on and look at my schedule and I can see if you have additional openings. Absolutely. You can, you know, we want to put the power back into our patients as well, because there are times when they go, you know, I probably ought to go and see him today. I really feel like I want to get adjusted, but I don't know. He's probably pretty busy. Well, guess (laughs) what? Now you can jump on my schedule and go, Ooh, there's an open slot at 945. I'll take that. So, you know, and the, you know, the texting and the emails and all that, you know, make sure that you're, you're being compliant when you, when you do all those things, make sure you're not just haphazardly doing it. But a lot of this EHR software anymore will help you with that. And there are some outside services as well. And there's some, uh, there's some two-way texting services that are free that you can download to work with patients as well, because you got to make sure that your texting is encrypted and all that good stuff. So there are a lot of benefits at this point. And I will tell you, you may be aware of this already, but here's a little nugget. People respond to text messaging better than anything right now, better than phone calls, better than emails. It works really well, but you just need to make sure that you're doing it compliant. Don't, don't get yourself in a, in a HIPAA situation with your, with your texting uh, the way that you do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, there are so many tremendous opportunities for DCs in 2023. So make mm-hmm. sure you're plugging into those. We, we don't have time here today to go through all of them um, because there's so many. Plug into some of the information that we put out there. And hey, if you haven't done so already, go to catsconsultants.com and check out our brand new Path to Prosper program. It's amazing. It's innovative. And uh, I think you're going to love it because, well, just go check it out. So Path to Prosper on the catsconsultants.com page. And I want to thank our brand new sponsor, Dr. Andrew Bar- Barlow with the uh, Barlow Brain and Body um, Institute. Um, go and check them out, barlowbrainandbody.com. And Troy, always a pleasure to have you host with me on our show. So always. thanks for being here today. All yeah. right, every, everybody. Happy holidays to you. And we'll see you in 2023. See you later.